Hello, my name is Daria Safarova, and today I would like to speak about nonverbal predication in Austroasiatic languages. And um, yeah, and here is an outline of my presentation. So first of all, I will speak about theory of nonverbal predication. Then I will give a brief introduction and brief classification to Austroasiatic languages. Then I will separately consider equitative sentences, existential and locatives one. Then I will consider same marking of different types of predication. After that, I will give a typology of main types of Austroasiatic la languages based on how they um, cover, how they uh, mark the different types of nonverbal predicates. Uh, and at the end, I will consider negation in nonverbal predication, and then I will give some conclusions. So let's start with the approaches to nonverbal predication. Uh, the most typical semantic predicate in a sentence is a verb, and it is called verbal predication, but languages uh, normally allow uh, deviation from the prototype, and it's called nonverbal predicates. predicates. And Stassen proposed the next typology of nonverbal predicates. So um, he proposed three types of nonverbal predicates. It is property composite predication, as an example, a John is beautiful. Uh, class membership predication, John is a teacher, and location predication, John is at home. And often, together with an unavoidable predication, uh, the, um, existential and possessive predication is considered uh, because in different languages they can be expressed with the same means of expression. So, example, there were boys in the street is existential predication, and I have three sons is a possessive predication. And uh, different types of nonverbal predications may use similar means of expression. Often in sentences with a nonverbal predicate, a semantically empty link verb, uh, which is also called copula, is used. And this copula uh, can take uh, markers of verbal categories. So, for example, one, Khmer is my favorite language, is, is actually a copula. And often in languages, existential and locative predication are expressed using the similar devices, uh, sorry, similar devices. And the only difference is that in the existential predication, localization is not specified. For example, in example two, there was a book on the table, it is existential predication, and the book was on the table, is locative predication. And now I will discuss briefly classification of Austroasiatic languages. So uh, the Austroasiatic languages are spoken in Southeast and South Asia, as well as on uh, several islands in ocean, Indian Ocean. And according to Glottolog, the Austroasiatic family includes uh, more than 150 languages. I will not now discuss the classification but I will just say that um, the most commonly accepted classification includes the division of Austroasiatic languages or into three or sometimes two branches, uh, Mundi, Mon Khmer, and sometimes Nicobaris is also uh, specified as a separate branch, a subfamily. But uh, the most recent classification by Sidwell, um, who does not, uh, is basically who does not accept the division into subfamilies, Munda and Mankmer. And he just proposed 12 equal branches like Kassian, Monik, Viati, Khmer, Eslin, and so on. And here is my sample. I considered um, 44 languages. Uh, and my data is from grammars or grammar sketches. And yes, here is my sample. And I think, and now I will consider uh, um, equative predication, equative sentences. So Austroasiatic languages can be divided into two groups based on how they express equative nonverbal predication. So first group is those which copula is used. And uh, as an example 13, uh, copula meh can be used. And those in which copula is not used. 
uh, as an example 14 from language car Nicobari, Nicobari's language car. But also there are languages in which copula is optional. For example, in language Rook, uh, copula, which is actually a borrowing from Vietnamese, uh, can be used or can not be used. And in examples for 24 and 25 from Munda, uh, copula can can also is optional. We can use we can say sentence without it. And here is uh, my map, and we can say that uh, mostly languages use copula, so it is green uh, dots on this map. But uh, there are also languages where there is no copula, and the map shows that there is a distinct area of uh Aslan Nicobaris languages can be distinguished uh, where there is no equative copula. And in Mon Khmer and Mun languages, copula is mostly used, but there is a number of languages like Mnong, Danao, and Duang, um, in which copula is not presented. And now existential predication. Uh, almost all Austroasiatic languages do not distinguish between existential and possessive nonverbal predications, so they both exploit the same marking. As an example from Ma language, uh, the first example, 31, is I have sour and sweet fruits in my garden. It is possessive predication. We use copula ge. And an example, there are seven tables in my room. Copula ge is also used in existential predication. And now locative predication. Um, separate distinction of locative nonverbal predicates is justified in many respects only for more Khmer languages, since they use specialized marking for these nonverbal predicates. Um, so in example, so uh, in, in, in examples, we can see that uh, uh, in example 44, his owner, so he is owner, we can see the copula pan is equative copula, which is used in this sentence. Uh, in example 45, there was a monkey and a turtle who were friends with each other. It is existential predication we use the copula me in uh, as the first um, in the first place. And in example 40. 46. As for the title, he stayed at home or he was, uh, he stayed in there or he was there. Actually, you can say it like this. Copula ot is used. And uh, in this case, it is, um, so we cannot use different copulas in this example. Pan or me, only ot is possible. And almost all Munda languages, by the way, they do not have specialized locative nonverbal uh, predication encoding. And in these languages, existential copula also covers the locative meaning. And now I want to discuss uh, the same marking. Uh, mm, as I told before, uh, almost all Munda languages do not contrast locative and existential predication, and they use the same uh, devices. As an example, 49 and 48, um, copula de cu, uh, used um, in locative predication, and also this copula is used in existential predication, just an example, 48. But also there are languages a number of languages which you uh, which cover um, which do not distinguish between the existential and equative predication and uh, they use the same tools for marking them and such languages include quai my and different one uh, for example uh, in the slide we can see example from the top uh, we can see that this copula there is a row of root on the tree. Uh, this existential predication, we use this copula. And the same copula we use in equative predication. Mm. My, our village is a place in Mongol district, and this copula T is also used in this context. And I will also now uh, consider um, an example from Mundari. So 
Mundari is a special case since in present tense Mundari controls these two nonverbal predicates, predications, and uses copula tan and mena for echo defense and distantial and translocative nonverbal predicates respectively. So we can see this in examples. But in past and future tenses, these two predications are not contrasted. And in, in Mundari, the copula tai, like this, is used for both existential and equative predication. So it is, in my example, it's only one example of this uh, feature. Yeah, so, and here is my typology in, on the map. And, uh, and we can say that uh, usually, uh, languages of South Southeast Asian area, mainland Southeast Asia, they contrast existential and equative predication. But uh, um, we can see that this area of South Mundi languages that does not contrast existential and equative predication. Uh, so, and now I want to may uh, to discuss uh, main types of languages that we can make according to uh, how they uh, mark uh, different types of predicates. So there is my default, the main types of languages, and I found seven of them, and I want to discuss them now. So first uh, strategy is can be found in Khmer, uh, and the language uses separate marking for each type of nonverbal predications, as in in our predication. For example, the pick is under the house, truk neu kramp tia. Copula neu neu is used for um, locative predication. There are four children in my in my care. Copula mian is used for existential predication. And the tiger is a stupid animal. Klatia is Tia uh, is used for um, equative predication. And now the different case as a second strategy where the language uses use the same marking for all uh, for all predications. And we can see example in the slide. Um, the copula AC is used in distantial, locative, and uh, equative predication. Uh, the third type um, uh, uses the same languages of this type, use the same marking for locative and existential nonverbal predicates, but different for equative clauses, as in one. Uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I will skip these examples. Uh, the next strategy, the fourth, is the language uses the same marking for locative and equative nonverbal predications and separate for existential. Uh, we can also see this in example, but I'll also skip it. And the next uh, types of languages is where equative and existential predications mark the same, but locative is different. And uh, also one more interesting case of languages is marker-based. Um, it's about, it's most like Xingmul and my language, and these languages can belong to one of the two types depending on the marking. So Xingmul can be associated with the, uh, with the type when, where all three types of predications mark differently, and with the type where locative and equative predication mark the same, but existential is different. And it's depend on um, the copulars which is used. So I'll also skip this since I don't have a lot of time. Uh, and tense based languages I discussed already. Uh, it was about Mundari language, where in different times it can be it can belong to different types of languages. So and here is uh, the map which shows the this main. Uh, Typology, and the map the map shows that South Mundi languages use a strategy where all three types of predications mark the same, so they do not contrast between these three types of nonverbal predicates. It can be also noted that Austroasiatic languages in main Southeast Asia 
mainly use a strategy of contrasting all types of nonverbal predicates, unlike Mundi languages, like it is blue dots. And in order to draw more conclusions, more data, more data on other Austroasiatic languages are needed, though. So, but now I think we can see um, the preliminary results of the typology of these languages. And now I want to briefly discuss negation in nonverbal predication. So, the first. Uh, um, Yes, yeah, the first the language in my sample can be divided into three classes depending on how they and how they negate equative sentences. Uh, so first, a language exploiting the standard ne uh, standard negation strategy. Second, languages that use a special negative copula, and three, and uh, languages that use the direct negation avoidance strategy. So the first uh, example it is standard negation. Mm. Uh, in this uh, in this strategy, uh, the copula is under the scope uh, of standard verbal negator as in kamu. And in this example, we can see that there is uh, a verbal negative pairs, which can be also used before the verb no. And in our verbal predication, it, this negator is used before the copula. Negative copula uh, examples is a second strategy. Uh, so in these languages, there is actually a negative copula, which is which is different from the positive one. And we can see this example in this Catholic language. So negative copula is ich, and the positive copula is la. And DNA or direct negation avoidance strategy is the most interesting one, since I think it is found only in Southeast Asia. And in this construction, it is not the predicate, but the explicit confirmation of the predicate's truth is negated. So uh, let's see example from Khmer. Uh, he is not a doctor. Yes, there is a negative construction. And man, and in this case, it's not the copula, but the man, which is translated as true, is under the scope of the negative mean. And Ericsson uh, named this um, named this strategy as a ne direct negation avoidance. And here is a map which shows that uh, mm, the main uh, it shows how language express negation, how Austroasiatic languages express negation, and so we can say that uh, almost all Mundi languages have a negative copula strategy. Not all, but actually, I have only two languages in this sample. And the Mon Khmer languages spoken in mainland Southeast Asia mostly use direct negation avoidance strategy. It's these blue uh, or sort of green dots. And uh, the strategy with the standard negation is quite rare. Uh, it is pink dots. And found both in Munda and Mon Khmer languages. And now I want to be briefly discuss um, ex uh, negation in existential, existential sentences. Uh, and these uh, types of sentences, we can, they can be, I found on the two ways to express negation. Uh, it is uh, existential, negative existential verb or just standard negation. And now we, I think we can clearly see that Mundi languages mostly use existential, a negative existential verb, and languages in on mainland Southeast Asia just use standard negation, which means that we use simple verb negator, and then after this uh, negator, we use existential verb. So here is my here are my conclusions. So first, the contrast of equative existential locative publication is important for Austroasiatic languages, since many languages use specialized marking for each of these types. Uh, in many Austroasiatic languages, the possessive and existential uh, predications are marked in the same way. Uh, uh, Austroasiatic languages can be divided into seven types based on how they contrast different types of predications. 
and there are three strategies of negation in equative sentences in Austroasiatic languages. And with regard to the negation in existential sentences, Austroasiatic languages use one of the two strategies. Sorry, here is my references, and thank you.